Um, stay tuned because I dare say you'll want to know the answer to this question. How do you make loads of money? Uh, well, I'm hoping that my next guest has the answer to it. His new book, which is actually out in uh, paperback uh, next month, is entitled Money. You can already uh, listen to it. Uh, or the audio version, and he is from Peterborough. He is, well, you're, you're lots of things, aren't you, Rob Moore? I'd like to call you a, a property mogul, but you're much more besides that as well. Entrepreneur? Yeah, so someone who likes to uh, invest, uh, create products that people find useful and valuable. Um, yeah, entrepreneur, I guess, a, a, a compulsive, addicted entrepreneur. Anything that's sort of around business and starting up just excites me. Um, yeah, so um, in 10 years, I'll probably be doing some other kind of businesses. Yeah, yeah. multi multimillionaire is, is something which is often used to describe you. Do you like that title? Well, I mean, it's true. So, I, I, you know, like... I think I say that because I think in this country we're very afraid to be honest about money we earn and talk about money we earn. In my book, Money, I, I shared the statistics, which are quite shocking, that um, most um, husbands don't know what their wives earn and vice versa. So more than 50% of partners don't know what their wife earns or their really? husband earns. And so... Um, I don't want to be known just as a multimillionaire because, you know, I'm a property investor and I want to help people start up their own businesses. I'm a public speaker. I'm an author. Um, but I think that, you know, if you've made a success in business and you've done well yourself and done well for others, I think that, uh, you know, you... In America, we were talking about this before, We were just talking we? about the cultural difference because in this country, somebody does well, they're a multimillionaire, they own lots of properties, people are like, oh, do you know what, I hate that guy, you mm. know, and he's, he's bringing the country down to rack and ruin. In America, quite the opposite, you'd be you'd be praised yeah. for, for living the American dream. Yeah, for sure. And it's weird. It was funny because I am I have quite a lot of cars and I was filling up my Ferrari um, at the petrol station. Oh, see, I hate you now. Yeah, well, I mean, I did go. like you. <laughs> Bear with me on this because um, someone asked if they could take a photo and I said, yeah, of course and we had a chat and it because it is a bit of a conversation starter and i don't want to be someone who's a bit defensive about that why not and anyway he um he put it on a website which is called parking lighter like an expletive yeah. in peterborough um and then i was all over this um facebook page parking like a yeah. idiot in peterborough even though i was just filling up my car petrol and then there were hundreds of comments about oh this guy he's got a ferrari parks in disabled spaces which i don't he does this that, and the other which he doesn't he's filling his car up with the wrong petrol which he doesn't uh, and then a few people were going and going well, wait a minute the guy's just got a car he's just minding his own business and it's funny how that brings all of that up i'm the same guy i mean we went to school together it's kind of funny yeah. we we're talking about that i'm the same guy then as i am now except i've just got a little bit more money i'm not i'm not really any different um, so, yeah, it just brings out all these emotions money does in this country. And in America, you're lauded, you're a big guru, you're a star, you know, the American dream. You know, you can start something up, you can come to this country as an immigrant. I mean, America's been amazing for Arnold Schwarzenegger, brought him in and look at him now. And in mm. the UK, it's like we have this class system. And it's almost like, well, you know, you're working class or you're middle class and, and, and you know, we don't like each other. And I'd kind of like to get rid of all of that. But I think that it's important to make money doing good things helping people you know creating products and services that people need and want and that's what steve jobs did and that's what um you know dyson did and you know yeah. that, that's what i believe being an entrepreneur is what does what does the work that's what elon musk is doing what does the world want and need let's make meaningful products let's change the world and if i could have some too that is that okay uh, let's let's talk about your your journey then as it were how did you how did you make your money where did it okay. all start for you so i was a struggling artist in peterborough life had gone not so good i loved art but i didn't like the business the marketing the promotion of it you know i was only ever going to be successful when i was dead i was the proper stereotype <laughs> uh, and um i just got to the point where i really couldn't afford to live anymore i got myself in a lot of consumer debt credit cards on credit cards on credit cards and at that time in 2005 property was quite popular and uh, long story short is there was a, a gallery owner who was hanging my work he wasn't selling it unfortunately he was hanging it <laughs> but he, it looked nice and um, he said hey you should come to this property event you know people are getting into property you can get into property without deposits you can you know anyone can do property and i was like no nah, i haven't got any money i can't do it i haven't got any experience anyway so he dragged me along and i went to this property event and I met my business partner, Mark, who I've been in business with ever since. And we partnered up and he used my enthusiasm and passion and energy. And, um, you know, I like to do speaking and go out and meet people. I love networking and things like that. And and he put the deposits in and we'd partnered. So I had skills he didn't and he had skills I didn't. So that's how I got into to property. And we've got, what, 700 and odd properties we own or co-own or manage now. Um, and we've you know, built our own little business empire. 
Um, and yeah, so that's how I got into it. And then once, you, once you've got enough money for yourself, then you can start doing what you really love. Because mm. whilst I love property and it's a great service, you know, looking after all of our tenants and all that kind of thing, you know, I, I, I like creating new things and, and helping solve problems for people. And that's what my books do. Um, and that's what, you know, many of the businesses I have do. Could you, could you not have done what you've done without somebody then helping you and having a bit of money? You, you couldn't have done this from scratch. No, I think that uh, if I'm being honest about it, I was failing myself when I was an artist. I'd also done architecture, but did nothing with it. And I'd, I'd been a pub landlord and done nothing with it. So from 18 to 25, I completely lost my way. And I was doing all of this stuff on my own. And then when I got into property, I met a, a business partner and we, we joint ventured. So I think that, you know, one way you can make money more quickly is you can partner with people. You know, you can partner with um, financial investors who back you. I mean, every every company in Silicon Valley is a startup guy with a, an idea, but he's got no money and you know, he's living on noodles. Mm. And then you've got all the venture capitalists and the angels, and that's a partnership. And if you have staff, that's a partnership. You, you know, you partner with Nigel here and w- with what you do. So I think I, you know, embrace partnerships. And so I was that enables me to focus on my own strengths because in business, you've got to do a load of things. But you've also got a load of to do a load of things you're not good at. Mm. Whereas um, if you get people to do the things you're not good at, I'm, I wrote a book on it called Life Leverage, and, and then you're able to do the things you're good at, it, it strengthens your skills and you merge your passion and profession. And you enjoy more what you do. I mean, you yourself, as we can tell from this interview already, are a, you're, a, you're a sellable kind of product you know you've got the enthusiasm mm. you've got the gift of the gap but for people who are listening then who are stony you know stony broke uh, even more than that you know they got credit card debt which mm. we've been hearing about on the on the radio this morning can they get themselves out of that on their own and then become wealthy like you or do they do they need to find somebody then you can't you can't do it from from the base level and below i think you can do it on your own um, but ultimately, any successful business or successful business per- person has staff. You know, obviously, you need your customers. Uh, you know, they have team members, they have outsourcers, they have personal assistants, virtual assistants. So, if you look at any successful person on the planet, even the big celebrities and the sports star, they have agents. Mm. So, it's a bit of a myth that an entrepreneur is this individual one man band thing. You know, no man is an island. So, we're all interconnected. So, you can start the process on your own because really, what you need to make money is a passion for something and then a way to find the market for it and then a way to find the customers uh, and and meet that sort of triad so you've got passion market and then customers or or profession if you like top of the pyramid exactly and and the the thing for me is making money isn't difficult because i'm doing what i love and um, when you're doing what you love and loving what you do you merge your passion profession vocation vacation it doesn't seem like work There are challenges. It gets hard sometimes. But when you do what you love and it gets hard, you play through it. Um, what about relationships and, and friendships? Because you, you you mentioned there all of those awful you know comments from people who, who saw you driving around in a Ferrari. When you became wealthy, did all of your friends change? Well, I mean, because people who you knew before when you mm, weren't wealthy became embittered by your success. Some did and some didn't. Uh, and I think when you become successful in whatever you do, it's a really good test of who your friends really are. And yeah, some people were just, oh, Rob's changed. But actually, the only thing about Rob that's changed is he's got better at business and he's made more money, but nothing else has changed. And, um, you know, you said um, earlier in one of your little excerpts that, you know, money might might not make you happier. But actually, I think it really does. Mm. I am a happier person with more money. I give hundreds of thousands of, away to charity. You know, I, I, people value what I do now. Uh, and, 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 and I am a lot happier. And OK, you know, material items, they aren't the be all and end all. But if you're depressed in a Ferrari or depressed in a very rusty car, then one is slightly better <laughs> than the other. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it definitely. And, and you can do great things with money. You know, as much as people say that, you know, money isn't the be all and end all. Well, you can set up your foundation. I've just recently set up my brand new foundation to help people across the planet who are less fortunate than me. Uh, and you, you can do great things with it. You know, most people say, well, if I had no, all the money in the world, I'd take all my family on holiday to Necker Island or something. Well, you can't do that if you're skin. You know, you can only do that if you've got money. Um, but I think passion, want, you've got to want to help people as well. 
You know, I think there's this bit of 80s myth that to make money, you've got to screw people over and, you know, be a hard, double-breasted salesperson. Well, I know many millionaires and quite a lot of billionaires. And actually, you can't stereotype them. They're all really different. Some sort of lord their wealth. Some you wouldn't even know their names and they don't want anyone to know. Mm. Uh, but most of them are nice people to be around. Many of them have got weaknesses and flaws as well, because we all do. Uh, and they all have products and services that the world need. Mm. So, uh, uh, quite a lot of them are miserable, though, are they? I mean, you know, at, That's least, a myth. at least let us have that. That's a myth. No, no, this, <laughs> this is what we want to believe culturally, don't we? Yeah, so that we don't feel bad about not being multi Exactly. So then we, yeah, exactly. Then we can excuse ourselves. But actually, I'm sorry to say it, but most of the millionaires I know are pretty happy. And they're certainly happier than when they were skint. Rob Moore uh, from Peterborough, my guest this afternoon. Fascinating stuff. Uh, he'll talk more about his book, Money, which could maybe help you to get your hands on more of it as well. Uh, coming up very shortly here on Lunchtime Live. It's BBC Radio Cambridge here. BBC nice Radio Cambridge here. It's 23 minutes to one. We'll start playing your requests after the news at one this afternoon. But let's rejoin my uh, first hour feature guest, Rob Moore. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, businessman, property mogul from Peterborough. I'm going to uh, shake hands hands with him furiously at the end of the show just hope that some of his uh, his money will rub off on me um how do you go from so you, you started in property first of all you didn't have a penny to your name but you you hooked up with your biz, now business partner and and started investing in property but how do you go from from the first property to now 700 how does that work so initially we used his money uh, and like i said my passion enthusiasm and uh, the skills i had that he didn't uh, then we bought 20 in our first year together and he ran out of money. So then we went to his mum and we raised money out of her and then she ran out of money and we went to his stepdad. We raised money out of him. Then he ran out of money and we went to my uncle. He ran out of money. We went to my mum. She ran out of money and then we went to all friends and family. So we so a, lot of we faith, probably, yeah, a lot of faith in yeah. you from loved ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah true. But you know like ultimately people buy energy passion and enthusiasm don't they so you know if you buy any products or services you buy the energy the passion the enthusiasm you know if you buy a ferrari you buy the brand of ferrari and what it means uh, and i think people could see that in mark and i you know we were in this for the long term we really enjoyed doing it and property's a pretty stable consistent return the whole of the uk love property love to talk about it so it was they were buying our energy enthusiasm, but in a pretty safe investment. You know, we weren't doing anything that was a bit flighty. Um, and so we ran out of all families' money. And so then we went to private investors and to just general people. You can go to property events and business events and angel events. And we were just trying to raise money from people. And, and we weren't really doing anything different to any, any other startup businesses. You know, companies like Twitter or Facebook, they go to the markets and they raise money. And people will put money. You know, you watch Dragon's Den. Mm. And mostly the dragons will invest in, yes, the idea, but not if the person they don't like. But they often invest in the person. Mm. And, you know, if there's great idea, don't like the person, they won't invest. Average idea, love the person, they'll invest. The dragons always invest in the person. And I think, you know, Mark and I, they were investing in us. Let me put this to you, uh, because there'll be a lot of people listening, uh, can't afford to get on the property ladder, may have, you know, youngsters, particularly here in Cambridgeshire, desperate to own their own home, but can't see that ever happening, uh, potentially there's not enough homes in this country and then they hear you talking about i've got i've got 700 they might think that you're the problem what mm. do you say to that well i mean there are if we have around about 1100 or 1200 tenants out of those 700 properties because some of them are multi-lets and some mm. of them are commercial properties then that's 11 to 1200 people that may not have a home if we weren't renting to them and then there's all sorts of refurb teams and handymen and you know cleaners and electricians who we employ to man maintain and manage all of our properties. We have 75 staff in the office, probably more than 100 outside of the office, contractors, all these people that their mortgages are getting paid thanks to our companies and the, the money that we're generating. Now, I don't want to take the credit for all of them, mm. but you know, when you run a business, you pay VAT, you pay corporation tax, you pay national insurance, you pay business rates, you, you generate all of this money over and above what you do. And we employ lots of people and we create lots of commerce and economy. Uh, and so I, to that end, I think that we're really adding value to society because take away my 700 properties, what are those 1,100 tenants going to do? They've got to go and find another house. And the government aren't building enough houses. So what the government do, because I'm not, I'm not a government ba basher, mm. by the way, I think there's some great incentives now. The government say we're not going to build all the houses, so we'll incentivize entrepreneurs to do it. And they support us and give us some tax breaks and, 
Mm. And, and so I actually think it's um, a good, fair, balanced economy in that regard. Uh, wh- why is it that the rich seem to get richer whilst the poor get poorer? Well, um, this is something you mentioned in your book, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I think from a common sense point of view, um, the a, a body in motion tends to carry on in motion and a body at rest tends to stay at rest. Um, you know, from an energy movement point of view. So debt works in the same way. If you're in debt and you've got interest on debt, that interest adds to the debt and it adds to the debt and it adds to the debt and it compounds and it gets bigger. But if you've got five or 10 million or 20 million or 50 million and you earn five to 10% on that, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. There's this really brilliant infographic that you can find on social media, which tracks Warren Buffett's net worth. And from 14 years old to 50, it's like the graph doesn't even move up a millimeter even though he's like made tens of millions by then. But then in his, because he's like nearly nearly 90 now. And then it just goes boom off the chart because of compounding. It, it goes up a lot. Um, also, people who create products and services and they employ people, they create commerce and economy. They become more valuable to society. And so society ends up funding them. Ultimately in the world, producers serve consumers. And consumers need producers to survive. And therefore, the consumers give the producers all of the money to consume the items, whether it's food or iPods or whatever. Um, You know, like there's quite a funny joke that if you give a rich person 500 quid, they'll turn it into millions. If you give a poor person 500 quid, they'll turn it into an iPhone. You know, because so often poor people are poor because they're consuming liabilities and items that go down in value. I was talking to you about some of the watches and cars that I've bought. But I make sure I buy a car like the, like the Ferrari. I paid 165 for that. It's probably worth nearly 200 grand now. Yeah. I make sure if I'm going to consume, I consume into assets that either don't go down in value or grow in value. Yeah, you didn't buy it new. You waited no, for exactly. a, few, a few miles on the clock yeah. before it you know, rolled off the forecourt exactly. kind of thing. So the person who brought it new got it for 235 grand or whatever, and I bought it less than two years old at 165 and it's gone up in value because the new model came out and the car market's pretty strong at the moment and I do that with watches and and it was my business partner Mark who taught me all of that because what I used to do is go and spend my 200 quid a week wages and go down and spend it all down the designer clothes shop and a designer a designer shirt that might cost you 150 is worth 30 quid that you sell on eBay you know in, in six months so we've got two minutes how do we all get rich you work out what you love to do such that if money was no object and work won't work, you'd do it. You then work out how to inspire and serve other people doing that. You know, like this, like Chocky Wocky Doodah, you know, there's this famous sort of chocolatier, you know, the most passionate chocolatier, a passionate watchmaker, passionate speaker provider, passionate maker of headphones. You know, sometimes you think this thing I could never monetize. But there are all these weird and wonderful things that people monetize. The Sultan of Brunei pays a chap five and a half thousand pounds for a haircut and he flies him over. So you can imagine that guy's really passionate about cutting hair. And then you've got the other people who charge eight quid in a barber's and aren't passionate. So you've got to believe that the thing you love, you could also earn money. Because you could, you know, you know, you do this thing, but you could have a podcast and you could have millions of subscribers, for example. Then what you do is you find a way to serve people with it, solve their problems, create products and services that they want, that they need. And then this is the big bit. Then you've got to charge for it. And there's a lot of great, talented people in the world that, aren't, that uh, uh, aren't charging for their work. Like I was, I was a good artist. I really was, I'm trying to convince myself. <laughs> it. But I got A's all the way through. But I, I didn't have the, I, I thought it was bad to charge for my work, but this is my whole life. And yet I'm not charging for it. So then you've got to charge fair and fair exchanges. I can make profit and you can get value. He's an inspiration, isn't he? I expect you all to be rich by what? Not the end of next week. We we'll give him a couple of weeks, yeah. should we? Okay. Uh, Rob Moore, author of Money. How do we get our hands on the on the book? Okay. It's not until next next month, is uh, that you right? You can get a pre order copy on Amazon, or you can get an audio version, which is out now on Audible. Great stuff. Uh, the book is called Money by Rob Moore, uh, my guest from Peterborough this afternoon. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. Uh, it's-